tell you a little bit about the Bible and the common man's language. I want to tell you something about myself. I used to believe that the King James Bible was the only authoritative Bible that there was. I even preached it from the pulpit. And, and I used to believe, because if you read, if you were to, I have a new King James, if you were to compare the King James with other versions, you'll find that there are certain things that are missing from some of these Bibles. And one in particular, in one version, there's a story about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, where the, the Philip is talking to this eunuch about Jesus, and they get to a body of water, and the eunuch wants to be baptized, and he said, if you believe. Well, in the King James, it says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In another version, I don't know which version it is, it says, I believe. And so that omission was proof to me there's only one Bible version that's true, and that's the King James. Until someday, one day, someone said to me, you know that Jesus didn't speak King James English. You know that, right? And then I read something about the discovery of the Scripture. It used to be thought that the Greek of Jesus' day was Shakespearean Greek. Oh, and how art thou? That's how they spoke back then. That's how they thought they spoke in Greek. And so the Bible language was always elevated. Until they, they, they found... Scriptures, translation of the scriptures written in, in this form of Greek. And they thought this was very Shakespearean Greek, let me, uh, to use uh, the words so that you understand what I'm saying. Until one day in some of their excavations, they came across a Roman post office. You know, there were post offices back then. They used to send mail back and forth. Well, they examined some of the letters in this Roman post office. And in the Roman post office, there were letters, bills, or, hi, how are you? The kids are doing fine. We miss you. These type of things, communication back and forth. And they were written in the same language, the same Greek, that the Bible manuscripts were written. The Bible was written in common man's language. It was written in common man's language for a reason. The themes are elevated, but the wording is not. Because you, God wants to, even the, the simplest person to understand the truth. And so I started looking at the Bible and said, now wait a minute, now why are some of these things missing? Well, all you got to do is read your introduction to the version of the Bible. And you'll find that some of these versions of Bibles are based on certain translations. Maybe the Septuagint, maybe uh, they have a bunch of the Codex Vaticanus, or, or Codex Sinaiticus. Uh, and, and they'll tell you, some versions have omitted, there's some things missing. And so they go with what that one version says. You, I use the New King James. But do you want to know which Bible version has the most manuscripts that were used that, that they say is the closest to the Greek? To the Greek meaning? It's not the King James. It's the Revised Standard Version. The Revised Standard Version. Any Bible is better than no Bible. And a Bible that you understand is a better than a Bible that you don't understand. Amen. John Wycliffe was a small blip on the radar of history when it comes to the church. But let me tell you something. What, what this guy did. His writings influenced a man by the name of John Huss. John Huss was a priest way over on the other side of the lake somewhere in Bohemia. Who believed the same thing John Wycliffe believed. And he was martyred for his faith. When John, when, when John Huss was being burned at the stake, he said, and in German, I guess this has special meaning, in English it doesn't. He said, today, you are burning this duck. But in a hundred years, a goose will arrive. And this goose, you will not be able to stop from spreading the gospel. A hundred years after the martyrdom of John Huss came a man on the scene by the name of Martin Luther. Martin Luther was influenced by the writings of John Huss and the writings of John Wycliffe. You see, this man whose life was seen like a flash in the pan in religious history was responsible for the influencing of the person who's responsible for leading out in the reformation of God's people. Bringing back the truth that you're saved by what Jesus did, not by what you do. And just another point, John Wycliffe's Bible translation eventually led to the translation of the Bible again in English. And that one we know as the King James English. How important is the Word of God to you? You know, we are living at a point in history right now, there's a lot of fear out there. There are a lot of people that are afraid. Gas prices, I mean, imagine 
that right now, they're saying that gas may be up to $5 by the 4th of July. There are people that are literally dealing with, I don't have enough gas to go to work. I don't have enough gas to look for work. The price of food is going up. Corn is being used for fuel, for cars, and for people now. How am I going to afford to live? There are people that are afraid of terrorism. Iran is threatening. We're going to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. They're getting nukes. There's all sorts of fear. How are we going to survive? Listen, how are you going to survive? Your traditions will not be enough to get you through the trouble that may be coming or may be off for a while. It is going to be by, by investing yourself in this world. Amen. Not just when your life falls apart, but during the good times. Every day you should spend time in this world. Take the Bible, study it, read it. Ask God to reveal himself to you so that we can be ready for whatever lies in good times or bad. That's my prayer. And I hope that's your prayer as well. We're going to sing our closing song now. It's 200, 272.